I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I've noticed a trend in prepping videos here on YouTube where some of the most popular ones are shot inside of a vehicle in an urban environment. So I figured I'd give this a try and see how this plays with the algorithm. Before I get going with today's video though, I wanted to let you know that tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be doing a live stream, not on this channel, but over at Survival Living's channel. He's invited me again to pop back to his channel. I, I love his content over on his channel. He's a really authentic, real guy. He shares a lot of uh, very helpful um, information with people and he's got a really uh, nice channel. So I appreciate him inviting me in on that and also in on that is going to be Ryan from Prescott Caliber Club who's got a great channel himself and is a great guy and I've never actually I've never met him in real life. We've uh, interacted a lot over the phone, so this will be a first time for us to kind of be interacting with, you, with each other on a live stream, so it should be pretty awkward. So if you guys want to pop over and check that out, we'd love to see you over there. Uh, so what is this video about? Well, uh, I figured, you know, why not just up the ante? We're already in a vehicle, in an urban environment. Why not talk about one of the most popular things here on YouTube, which is bug out bags. Now, I make fun of bug out bag videos here on my channel a lot. Which clown zombies are they dropping? Those are totally the bird flu infected ones. I have trained for this. It's time to bug out. But you know, honest to goodness, my bag is probably is probably the prep that I use most often. And this is kind of a bug out bag, but this is more like an EDC bag. And I'm gonna to be talking about what I uh, have in my EDC bag. Now, what I have in my EDC bag isn't necessarily gonna be the same as what would be in your EDC bag. I think we all need to kind of design our own based on what our needs are. But I'm gonna kind of go through everything I've got on here. So if you're new to prepping, it might jumpstart some ideas that you might have uh, for things that might be helpful to you as well. Uh, first off, this bag is made by who the hell can make this? This is a Maxpedition bag. Uh, I've had this for several years. It was recommended by a viewer of this channel. I should check out Maxpedition bags. And I really like Maxpedition stuff. It seems like it's really durably made. I'll put a link down in the description below to uh, either this or whatever their, their current equivalent bag is. Um, they're really durably made and they also have a lot of uh, little pockets and places to stick stuff. Uh, oftentimes when I was looking for uh, you know, a good EDC bag, you know, there'd be things and they wouldn't have a lot of pockets for organizing or they'd be kind of junky. Uh, Maxpedition stuff seems like it's really well put together. So I'm going to start on the outside surface here and then we're going to go in. I'm just going to talk about everything that I've got, in, uh, you know, in this thing. First thing you might be noticing right on the top is a water bottle. A water bottle is really important. You know, water is life and it's always important to be able to have access to this. This is an old lemonade bottle uh, that's made of glass. Upside of glass is that it's going to keep your water cleaner. It's not going to taste like plastic tea when it's sitting in a hot environment for a while. Downside of glass is obviously, you know, it can shatter and break. So that is a weakness of me having glass. Metal, I think, is a good compromise. But I've, I've been using this bottle for a while and, uh, you know, I just keep, keep at it and I haven't broken it yet. Uh, also, down inside of this pocket, I've got something, and this may not seem exciting at all, but just some extra bags. It's always useful to have just some, some plastic bags. Now, these are kind of being used as um, kind of padding at the bottom, because again, this is glass, so when I put this down, I don't want this thing to get bumped, but having those plastic bags down there, not only are they useful as bags, useful as padding, uh, it's just a great thing to have, and I oftentimes will have those, just if I'm out and I've got like an apple core and I want to bring the apple core back for compost, instead of just tossing it, you know, in a garbage can somewhere, uh, you know, I can use the plastic bags for that. Uh, on the side here, I've got a little container, and this is something I added. Uh, onto some of the molly webbing on the side and it's got an orienteering compass. I think it's always really great to be able to know, you know, just what the general direction uh, in your area is. There's all sorts of things that you can do, especially in a city, uh, for figuring out what uh, the general direction of things are. Um, but one thing that's really easy in cities is if you look around, scan the horizon, a lot of times people will have those uh, satellite dishes for like satellite uh, satellite television. And here in the Northern Hemisphere, those things always point generally southish. So if you're in an urban environment and you see a bunch of uh, d different people's dishes on their houses, they're all gonna be generally pointing south. So it gives you kind of a sense of direction. But I, I find that I use the compass frequently enough. So I keep that on my, on my uh, EDC pack as well. 
right in the top here, I've got some bandanas. Bandanas are good uh, as a hat if you want to wrap it around your head and it's cold. They can actually work as a pretty decent hat. They kind of uh, mat your hair down and help to uh, use your hair as insulation. And uh, they're also good for you know wiping things up or you know you know if you're sweaty or whatever. Um, a lot of a lot of great uses of bandanas, and I got two of them tied to the top here. Also tied to the top, I've got. Just some different strings. These are all like shoelaces and stuff like that. It's really, it's a really common thing to need to like tie something down. Maybe I need to tie something additional onto my bag and it's great to have cordage for that. So these are just a bunch of shoelaces that I use for that. All right, we're gonna kind of go come around the side here. Uh, this is a uh, sunglasses pod. Sunglasses I think are really great. Uh, not only do they protect your eyes from you know UV, but if you're out in a bunch of hot, uh, hard, hot sun, um, you, know, you can get yourself a headache after a while. So I always keep sunglasses on the side here. Now this little uh, pod, it came with like kind of a strap on the side, but the strap just fell off because it was crappily made. So I ended up just hot gluing it to the side of the pack. And it's been on there for, for several years and hasn't fallen off yet. Here's some more co cordage onto the molly webbing there. I got just a little piece of Velcro strapped on there. Now you notice I haven't really used too, too much of the molly webbing. I've used it here to attach some cordage. I've used it here to attach my compass. But a lot of the molly webbing uh, doesn't have stuff on it. I could have attached the sunglasses up here, but uh, one thing I wanted to avoid on my bag was making it dimensionally awkward. And the more stuff you start stacking up here, it just makes your bag taller and taller. And if you're ever gonna be uh, traveling on an airplane, uh, it made my bag too tall to really fit into overhead compartments. So I, I tried to put stuff uh, on the sides over here a little bit more. Let's pop over to the other side over here. Uh, on the front, uh, there's uh, some more little uh, straps for attaching things on here, and those are kind of, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of handy. I, I don't utilize them too, too much. I've got a, uh, a knife here. This is, I think, yeah, it's made by SOG. It's a, just a little knife. The one that I bought uh, is just, it's a tiny little uh, one that's plastic and metal, and I found that the handle on it was actually um, pretty uh, aggressive on my hands. So I took, uh, I'm not sure what this is, some kind of like a fabric textile ribbon, and I wrapped it all around the thing to kind of pad out the edges so that when I held it, I could get a better, a better grip on it. Uh, and I've got that attached just to the outside of my pack on this little hip brace here. I uh, just used some wire and threaded it through and I've had it on there. So it's nice that I've got it right uh, right where I need it uh, whenever I, I, I need to have a blade. And you know, people oftentimes think blades as like a defensive weapon and I guess you can use them as, defense, as a defensive weapon, although I would never want to be in a knife fight. That's just horrifying to me. Um, but I, I'm always using the knife for, you know, whatever, whether it's opening something or slicing through something or cutting cordage or, you know, uh, whittling down a, uh, a stick for making uh, you know a s'more skewer or something like that. I'm always using that knife, so it's nice to have ready access to it right on the outside. Uh, on the opposite side from the water bottle, I've got another pouch uh, right over here, and in there I've got a, a number of different things. One is a spotting scope. Now, a spotting scope may seem like kind of like a crazy sort of preppery sort of thing to do. It's like I, I'm infiltrating whatever, <laughs> and I need to uh, you know see how many uh, enemy soldiers there are for me to uh, bumble past and get shot by. Uh, but you know, I use the spotting scope quite a bit for uh, checking things like uh, you know if I see a bird and I'm curious about what it is. Uh, I originally bought the spotting scope for kind of a creepy reason. I bought it when my boy was in a preschool program, and it was an outdoor program, and I was really concerned about how he was doing and. And it was one thing to kind of be in the parking lot and be able to see him. Uh, they would be off in a field and in the woods and things. And I could kind of see his general body language, but I couldn't see the expression on his face. So I got the spotting scope so I could see if my boy was like actually despondent or having a good time. And it turned out he was having a good time while he was there, most of the time anyway. But I found it useful for lots of other applications, so I keep it in here. What else we have in here? I've got a uh, very tiny pepper spray, which is actually probably getting to the point where uh, it probably needs to be retired. The pepper sprays have expiration dates on them, and this one is probably getting past expiration. I was speaking with a forest ranger the other day, and uh, she had a, uh, a pepper spray on her hip, and we were just talking about it. And she said they routinely uh, retire these, and they've tested ones that have gone past expiration. And quite frequently, the ones that have gone past expiration, like, they're duds. Like, they just kind of they fizz, uh, fizzle out, and uh, they... It is important to pay attention to expiration date on these things. Now, that said, I don't know whether they test a lot of ones that haven't gone past expiration date, and maybe those would have been duds as well. Uh, you know, you really need to have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison there, but at least in her uh, experience, 
you do want to retire these when they're old and this one probably is getting kind of old let's see what else we have in here we've got a flashlight this is a flashlight made by through night through night is a company that uh, is always giving me uh, flashlights to test out and uh, I really like their products they're not the cheapest products in the world uh, and I honestly I would not buy their flashlights um, if I had to pay for them because they're so expensive uh, and honestly I'm usually just good using night vision uh, I think flashlights in in the prepper world are oftentimes you know people forget you don't always need a flashlight you know sometimes it's better to just not turn on a flashlight if you need to walk somewhere at night you put a flashlight on you your eyes adjust to that flashlight pull and you're blind to everything else around if you just let your eyes adjust a lot of times you don't really need a flashlight but i keep one in my bag for situations where i do need it and i do like the through night products they're kind of expensive and like i said it'd be outside my price range if i had to pay for these but they are really well made i've done some real abuse with these things and they keep ticking let's see what else we have in here more plastic bags and that's that's all we got on this uh for this side pocket here so i'm gonna throw stuff back in there and then we're gonna go into the main body of the bag now i mentioned that the uh, uh the bug out bag or edc bag is one of the preps that i use most frequently and that is really true you know i i'm always making fun of people uh doing bug out bag videos because i think a lot of people get into prepping and they just do a bug out bag and then they they end it there and that's the end of the story it's like if i get my bug out bag i should be fine for anything so i don't need to even like think about skills or anything like so i i kind of make fun of videos like that because i think people like get to that point and then end there and and that should be made fun of but I use this thing all the freaking time. It is an everyday carry bag and I carry it with me every day and I'm always going into this thing and using an awful lot of the stuff in here. Probably about only about 20% of what it, what's in here I use frequently. But one thing uh, that I use all the time is the water and there's uh, we're going to get some granola bar bars in there that I'm always utilizing. The knives on here I'm always utilizing. A, a everyday carry bag is a really useful item. I keep a camera in here for just taking pictures of my boy when we're out. Uh, this is my cell phone here, and I, I always store that in there. I mean, that has obvious utility uh, for people that are into cell phones. Uh, I had a flashlight, but I also have a headlamp. This one's also made by Through Night. A lot of times when I'm camping, I want to be using a headlamp as opposed to a uh, you know handheld flashlight because you want to have your hands free, so you're not like having to put the flashlight in your mouth to like do whatever you're doing. I love having a headlamp and having this small one. This is a really small one made by Through Night. I really like that one. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, pill containers here. One has aspirin and one has ibuprofen. Uh, that's the kind of thing I don't use it very frequently, but sometimes like if I you know, wasn't wearing sunglasses enough or I get dehydrated or something like that, I might get a headache. And it's nice to be able to just nip that in the bud and put it to, put it to rest so that you can focus on what you're needing to focus on, which is not the fact that you have a headache. So I carry these with me in here and uh, these little uh, pill containers are, are pretty cool. They just kind of top screws off of them just like, like that. And uh, you definitely want to rotate through your, your medicines while they're in there. Uh, what, else? what is this? Oh, <laughs> some candy that I never gave to my boy. And using one of the plastic bags that I'm sure was stuck in the side there. All right, we'll just we'll take that out of the bag for now. Ooh, also, gummy bears fall into that category as well. That's the other great thing about having an everyday carry bag is you can adapt it if there's things you want to bring with you on that day. It's not like a tiny little wallet or something like that where you can't throw like you know a bag of gummy bears in there or whatever you might want to uh, carry with you. Uh, this right here is a well, it's a backup camera. I don't, I'll just kind of unzip it as a backup camera, backup batteries, backup uh, memory cards. You know, having having a kid, I, I, I like documenting and recording his progress growing up and you know, all the things that we do together. And if I lost this or broke this, I like the idea of having a backup one there. And I buy them when they're, you know, used and on sale. Uh, there's a little eating tool I've got attached on here. And in this thing is digital stuff. I've got... Uh, a little USB stick, and this has all sorts of information on it that I uh, think is really important. In fact, I should do a whole video just on the stuff I keep on here, personal identifying information, um, uh, legal documents that I might need. If I ever had to like evacuate, and this is kind of all I had, I you know might want to have access to things like birth certificates, at least in a digital form on here. Uh, there's also maps. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff. I'll do a whole other video about just what I keep on here. Backup memory card for my camera, and you know because I'm throwing them everywhere matches in there all right so we'll put this stuff back away and a lot of these containers are just little things i've picked up over time like this little uh little zip up thing a lot of this a lot of stuff will come with like a memory card or something like that and i just repurpose it for 
for this. We've got another little pocket here. Again, you're seeing why I like these um, Maxpedition backpacks. It's got a lot of little compartmentalization of things. Uh, this is a Damascus knife. This is kind of my favorite knife. Uh, it's thinner and I'll use this for actually cutting food and stuff. Uh, the other one's more like, you know, rough and tumble kind of outside of uh, um, the backpack kind of stuff. I just need a knife quick, but this is the one I really prefer. I keep this one sharper and I really like that knife. Uh, I've got backup batteries for the camera. You can see that's a thing with me. I've got a little uh, tripod stand for a camera. I'll show you guys this one, this thing. It's kind of neat. It's got these little uh, bend out legs here. In fact, the camera that you're watching this on is sitting on another one of these things that uh, that I keep. It's just a, it's a great way of stabilizing a camera, um, you know, without having to carry a whole tripod. Although I I do have an entire tripod in here because, you know, this is part of what I do is I like recording videos for you guys. So I, you will see in a little bit, I've got an entire tripod in here. It's a little ferro rod. Uh, it's like a magnesium fire starter uh, kit. I don't like to use this because it's a real pain in the ass. Uh, so another thing of matches that I've got in there. So I like to have lots and lots of matches. Matches are really cheap, really easy to uh, uh, have access to now. And insofar as uh, there's something that we uh, have easy access to now, but you know, in the future may not have easy access to if you're stuck somewhere, I like to just stick them everywhere because it's such an easy way of starting a fire. I know people love, you know, doing fires with bow drills or they like the idea of doing fires with bow drills and all that kind of stuff, but it's a real pain in the butt. It's nice to have just a, a set of matches. I got my wallet in here. If you're ever uh, trying to uh, pickpocket me, this is where you want to go. This little pack, uh, pocket up here. More matches up there. A little bit of hand sanitizer. That was something that I adopted during COVID, so I would always have the ability to sanitize my hands. But it's come up uh, health, uh, useful in other situations as well. I, in one uh, instance, had a pretty big slice in my foot, uh, and this is actually uh, pre-COVID, and I, I'd had uh, some sanitizer in my medical bag, and I used the hand sanitizer for cleaning out the slice on my foot, which I got with, a, I think it was like a broken piece of glass and some sewage water. So um, yeah, you definitely wanted to get that cleaned out right away. If I had not, had my EDC bag with my medical kit, I mean, what are my chances that would not have gotten infected? Really, really low. It almost certainly would have gotten infected. So that was a really, uh, it was really great to have had that because I was able to clean the wound out and I was fine. It didn't turn into a big thing. Keys to my car in there. And I also, this is probably more than I need. I also keep uh, little pencils and things and I keep paper as well. You know, if you're ever in a situation where you need, well, I got a lot of pencils. If, if you're ever in a situation where you need to take a note or write something down, something critical information, a phone number or an address or something like that, it's nice to actually be able to write it down. So I've got uh, some pencils in here. Got a penny. I'm kind of going through this at the same time. Uh, it's nice to be able to have that. And I've got paper in other areas of this thing. All right, so we're gonna repack that. And we've got two more pockets here, kind of a smaller one and then a larger one. We'll do the smaller one smaller one first. All right, going into this one. This is my medical bag. I'm not sure whether I want to go in through everything in my medical bag. I think that's kind of its own video, but I've got the... I'll do it at the end. I'll save that for the end for you guys. If you want to stick around and see what's in my medical bag, you can check that out. Uh, what else do we have in here? I've got a multi-tool. Uh, you know, that comes up all the time. Most of the time I'm just using it for the screwdriver or the pliers. Uh, aspect to it. It does have other, other tools on there as well. If you ever are traveling and you have an EDC pack and you have a, a multi-tool though, keep in mind that if you get on an airplane or you go into a secure location, I went to visit the Statue of Liberty once and they uh, they wouldn't have let me t uh, get on the ferry to go to the Statue of Liberty with a multi-tool because it had a knife on it and I was going to you know, knife everyone. So I had to give up my, uh, my knife while visiting the statue commemorating liberty and freedom. Uh, a bug net. That's uh, something really handy here in New England. We've got a lot of biting flies, uh, mosquitoes, things like that. And again, you can just grin and bear it, or you can put on a bug net and then be able to focus all your attention on what you need to be focusing it on. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. This is something that comes up a lot in car rides. Ginger. This is just a little uh, medicine container. And I put uh, crystallized... Did it come out? Yeah, there we go. Uh, dropping sugar all over my car. Just crystallized ginger. I think crystallized ginger is a wonderful asset, especially if you have a, if you have a child and they get car sick. Uh, eating a little crystallized ginger really tamps down uh, nausea really, really effectively. It's like it's uh, insane how effective ginger is for uh, stopping nausea. More plastic bags because plastic bags are wonderful. I've got some gloves in here. Uh, these are made by Tech 
Tech Niner. Um, pretty good gloves. Uh, they've got like these hardened knuckles on the back. I don't have those per se because I want to go like, you know, punching people's faces in. It just happened to be the gloves that I had. But I'll use these a fair bit if I'm going somewhere and then suddenly I, it comes up. It's like, oh, you need to do some work or move something. It's got splinters all over it. It's nice to have these so you're not ripping up your, your hands. Down at the bottom here, we've got a, um, a tourniquet and I keep it right in its uh, sanitized package. Fortunately, I've never needed to use a tourniquet, but it's very light, it's pretty small, and I think it's worth uh, taking along with me. So I'm gonna pack this stuff uh, down, and, and as you're packing your bag, things that you don't think that you're gonna be using very frequently, you can put those way down at the bottom, uh, because uh, you, know, you don't have to get access to them very much. We got the bug net here, and uh, another, another pocket right here, and this is full of all sorts of, of additional things. Uh, I've got a knife sharpener, which, eh, it's kind of big for my uh, my sense of how frequently I actually use this. I've got another knife sharpening stone in there, and this would probably be something I would probably get rid of. Uh, this is just an easy kind of knife sharpener. But it's it's in there, and it's not too much for me to, to carry, so I, I, I keep it. This is the thing that I probably should just have. It's just a, a little uh, stone knife sharpener. It slides right into this little leather pouch. I probably should just carry that, but I've got both of them at the moment. Uh, we also... I honestly don't remember what's in here because I haven't uh, gone in here for a long time. I've got a lighter in here. I've got a magnesium fire starter. And I, I'm pretty, yeah, these other two things, there's two little tubes. Uh, they're full of uh, matches. And it's ripped open on the side there. Probably should uh, replace that out with a tougher, a tougher bag. What else do we have in here? A little lens cleaning cloth that's good for the, uh, the scope. It's also good for your sunglasses uh, to get smudges off them. More matches, because matches are wonderful. More matches, because matches are wonderful. These are waterproof matches in here. Uh, and, oh, and this this fell off of my magnesium fire star. That's probably what ripped the bag open. This is the strike, the strike rod for the side. All right, well, I got some work to fix all that stuff back up. Okay, so we're gonna get this packed all back up in here. And I honestly do use this thing all the time. There was one instance when I uh, was walking to a, a festival with my boy and it was very crowded. I, I decided, nah, I, just, I don't know how many people are gonna be in the crowd. I just don't feel like having my backpack on me that day. Went into this festival, went to a playground. I ended up skinning my knee on something at the playground. I was foolishly texting someone while I was um, uh, moving around this playground, uh, scraped a huge bunch of skin uh, off of my knee, and I had to walk back a mile to be able to get back to get this medical kit. If I'd had this, I would have been able to avoid what happened to me. What happened to me is because I wasn't able to sanitize out the wound right away, it ended up getting infected, and I ended up needing to use antibiotics because I got cellulitis. The whole area uh, started getting uh, red and swelling up and getting tender and was tingly definite signs of cellulitis. I needed to take an antibiotic and the antibiotic uh, knocked it right uh, right back down and it was fine because I'm a prepper and I have antibiotics in my home. They were fishing antibiotics incidentally and they work just fine. Um, but if I'd had my backpack, if I'd had this with me, the situation never would have come up. So it's it's a really great asset that I use all the time and even though I kind of poo-poo uh, people making so many videos about these, I, I don't use any of my preps more than I use my, uh, my EDC pack. Uh, one other thing I have in here is a bunch of them, granola bars, uh, these little cliff bars. I think they're great. There's a lot of energy, calories, protein in these. And I just keep this, sto this pack stocked with usually like six or eight of these things stuffed, in, stuffed into the pockets down here. Okay, so I'm not gonna put the med ba uh, medical bag back in. We'll talk about that at the very end if you're still interested in that. Now we're going into the big pocket and there's actually not that much in the big pocket. One thing in the big pocket is a tripod. Yes, I carry around an entire tripod with me uh, because I want to do these videos for you guys. At the moment, the camera that this is being recorded on, which also goes in into this backpack in a little uh, carry satchel, uh, the camera is being supported on that little bendy kind of thing. But whenever I want to do things where I I need a tripod. This is a very lightweight tripod. I got it from Amazon. It's like an Amazon, oh, it's an Amazon Basics tripod. Uh, it's a little short for me. Um, uh, I, I oftentimes in videos I'm doing the splits to get my my face down to be the right level for the camera. Uh, but I got it because it is really light and it it packs up really small and it fits into my backpack and I can carry this around with me. Uh, in the very back here, I've got a solar panel made by Goal Zero. Goal Zero is pretty cool stuff. It's what started me off. Uh, it 
getting into solar energy. Uh, it works pretty well. It's not the cheapest stuff by far. It's pretty expensive. You buy, you pay a premium when you're getting this stuff, but it's pretty versatile for travel types of things. And uh, this is a nice little panel. Now this is a little panel, and I, I have larger Gold Zero panels. But the thing is, is if you have a panel that's big and awkward and it's kind of too big for you to even want to bring it with you when you're going places what good is it doing you so i have the small one because it's, it's small enough that i actually carry it with me in the back here there's a cr pretty uh, cool and critical unit this is a little device which uh, pairs with the, uh, the goal zero panel and this charges double uh, a batteries or triple a batteries with an insert and uh, what you can also do is there is a usb out of this thing so you can use this to charge a uh, charge of the batteries and you can use the batteries for something or you can use the batteries to charge another device like a cell phone or you know whatever you might want to uh, charge off of this i've used this many times and uh, it is it, it's a nice little asset to have in there and it stores pretty small everything's you know right in that little side pocket there also in this this pouch I've got uh, gummy bears more gummy bears now uh, what's inside here is something uh, that I am frequently referring to this is my edible wild plants book this is my favorite edible wild plants book uh, it's very old I've got tape all over the cover it's it's been with me for a long time I love this book and I'm always referring to it when I'm out a lot of this book is in my brain now but not all of it at all and I'm always you know just uh, taking the opportunity to kind of learn more about my environment as I'm, I'm going around the reason it is in a plastic bag is to protect it from being kind of bumped around by uh, you know, other things that are in the bag, but also humidity. Uh, if you you know if the bag's in an environment that's really humid, the book is going to suffer from that. We've got another little pouch right up here. And this has all sorts of stuff in here: salt and pepper packets. That's kind of useful if you're ever collecting wild edible plants and you actually need to eat them. Salting a lot of the stuff after you've cooked it can make it uh, taste way better than a lot of wild edible plants uh, taste. This is something I've only used on one or two occasions. It is a lock picking kit. Uh, I've, I've only used it on a couple of occasions. Only one of those was even successful. Uh, if you have a lock picking kit, you need to understand that it's not like you see in the movies where there's a locked door and there's zombies right behind you and someone runs up to it and kind of molests the knob for like three seconds and then they're in. It, it takes some it takes some time and it takes some skill to use one of these kits. So if you're going to get one of these, don't just buy it and throw it in your backpack and think you're done. you got to like, actually practice with it. Glow sticks, in case uh, you know all electricity fails, you know, this is a way of having some light. Uh, more glow sticks. This, pretty important, this is a life straw. This is a water filter that you can use for sticking directly into polluted water and you can, uh, you can drink through it. Uh, it's not my ideal uh, way of, of purifying water. There's an, a definite life on this thing. It, you know, they don't last that long. But, um, it, you know, it packs up really small. My regular water filter that I bring with me camping, it's just too big. and I, I just wouldn't bring it with me. More matches. A little sewing kit in there. That's everything we got in, in here. And I actually I realized I did skip one, one pocket in the, uh, in the last... Uh, compartment and I do want to go back to that because there's actually some fairly important things in there that I think are worth uh, worth discussing. And that, this is what I love about this uh, Maxpedition bag is there's so many little compartments in it. All right, some pretty cool stuff in here. One, this is a Fresnel Ret lens. This is for like, you know, if you want to read read something you know for like older people that need magnification it's got a little bit of a crack in it I should probably try to fix that at some point but what this is great for is this is really super uh, effective at starting a fire like if it's out outside and it's a you know a sunny day you can get a little tinder under this thing and you're taking all this this uh, surface real estate and you're focusing it on a very small point this starts a fire really really easily so um, if you have the means to carry something like this around with you, it's a great way of starting a fire and, and saving your matches for when you actually uh, when you actually need them. I love this thing. I've used that on a number of occasions. What else do we got in here? I don't even know if these are good anymore. These were like back when there were payphones. I still got them. They're like calling cards, so you can use a, a payphone. I don't even know if they work anymore, but they take up like no space, so I still got them in here. I mean, try to find a payphone though. That'd be the problem. Space blankets. Got two of those. 
uh, you know, if I was ever in a situation where I was very cold, I've got uh, passports for myself and my boy in there. Uh, I forget what did I put in here. This little cute little leather bag. Oh, money. <laughs> I keep a bunch of money in here. I, I, I keep several hundred dollars uh, in both large and small bills in here. Uh, you know, and that's the kind of thing where, you know, it may not be the situation where it's like, oh, I've become a refugee and I need to bribe the guards to get across the border. It could just be it's like, oh, there's a yard sale and they're only taking cash. And, you know, aren't I glad that I have plenty of cash in my uh, my everyday carry bag for this situation. So uh, I've actually uh, utilized that for that particular reason on a, on a number of occasions. And it's made my life better. I've been able to... Uh, take advantage of deals that I would not have been able to take advantage of otherwise. So for the rest of this video, we are going to talk about what's in my medical bag. I think it's pretty important, actually. This is one of the things I, especially as a dad, I'm always going into this for band-aids, neosporin, things like that. So let's go through this. If uh, you don't want to watch the rest of the video about the medical bag, make sure you tune in tonight, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, over at... Um, uh, survival Living's channel. It's going to be myself, Survival Living, and Ryan from Prescott Caliber Club are all going to be there. And we all come from different uh, different uh, origin points in life, and we all have kind of different perspectives. And one of the things I, I love about, uh, you know, these guys is that, you know, so much of our culture is kind of um, been trained uh, to feel like, uh, you know, if you're not just like me, you know, you're evil. There's something wrong with you, or I, I can't have any kind of interaction with you whatsoever. And it's so toxic to the idea of a pluralistic society. And even people uh, in our culture, you know, liberals and progressives, and I kind of think of myself still as a liberal or progressive, even though a lot of liberals and progressives have gone kind of crazy. You know, the, these are the people that are supposed to really be all about pluralism and, and tolerance and accepting of other people. And, you know, even so many of the people that call themselves liberals and progressives, uh, you know, are so anti-tolerance now. And one of the things that you're going to see tonight over at Full Spectrum, uh, I, I keep almost saying Full Spectrum Survival, uh, um, uh, survival Living's channel is that uh, you know you're going to see three guys and we all come from different perspectives. We've had uh, different histories. We have different life experiences, but we can relate to each other in a respectful way. At least I hope so. Uh, you know, and we can uh, you know appreciate each other for our, our experiences and be courteous to each other. Let's watch the video tonight together. We'll see if uh, if that all pans out. But uh, you know, from what I uh, I know about these guys, I would anticipate that that's going to be the case. And that is so much of what our society needs: is just different people who have different opinions about things, have different points of view, listening to other people's uh, feelings, and uh, having respect for the sincerity of that other person. So that's what we're going to see tonight. If you want to stick around. Let's go into here because I use this thing all the time being a dad. I've got another sewing kit and I actually recently used this uh, to repair a, uh, a sun shirt. Uh, it was a UV shirt that I had while I was on vacation. Part of it ripped. And actually that is something I've been meaning to stick in here. In fact, I just washed it. It's in the laundry. That's why it's not in here today. Uh, but uh, another great thing to have in here is for sun uh, protection is having a UV shirt uh, that you know covers up your whole body. has like kind of a hood on it. Uh, I was wearing one. It ripped. I was able to use a sewing kit. Uh, to uh, to patch that up. As to why it's in my medical bag, I don't know. Is it like for suturing? I'm not sure. Uh, I've got a couple different uh, tweezers. These are the best tweezers in the world. They're made by Tweezer Man. Uh, one of them is a very pointy tip. The other is kind of like a, uh, um, a kind of a flat cutoff kind of thing. Uh, um, I'm always using these. I'm always getting splinters in my body. These are really great. I, I've got a Q-tip in there, though. I, I'm going to get rid of that. I would not use that Q-tip. That's not sanitary anymore. Um, it would be, I'm not sure if I have a package of Q-tips. It would be a good idea to have a package of Q-tips. This is something I use all the time, a nail clipper. And it's, a, again, it's not like, like it's a life or death nail clipping emergency. I, I, need, I need a nail clipper stat. I'm losing the patient. But, you know, it's one more thing. If you, you, your nails are getting long and they're kind of irritating you and you're afraid of, like, breaking them on something, you know, it's nice to be able to get rid of that worry and focus your brain on what it needs to be focused on, which is, you know, surviving, not dying, doing whatever you're, you're there to do, not worrying about whether you're going to rip your nail open because it burns too long. What do we got inside? Got some um, napkins. That, that's a very useful thing. We've got bandages. My package opened up a little bit. I should reclose that. Bandages, like little spot bandages, different size bandages, especially as a dad, I'm always using these things. Uh, what do I have? I know I've got little glass vials. I use my boy's little baby socks to hold little glass vials, kind of a way of patting them out. Uh, okay, this is portable aqua. This is a way of purifying water using um, 
Well, it doesn't use iodine. It's a uh, chemical that I, I'm not, I'm not going to venture to pronounce it. But this is a way of uh, purifying water so you, uh, you know, it won't get rid of chemical contamination, but it'll uh, kill any biological contamination. The way I, I seal these up is I uh, drop it in, kind of fold it over like that, and then I take the sock itself to kind of go over like that. I mean, it's not bulletproof, but it kind of keeps them together while they're in there. Uh, I think this is my new skin liquid bandage in this one. I use that fairly frequently enough. Yep, liquid skin, new skin, whatever, liquid bandage. That's a pretty uh, handy one. It, it both um, uh, cleans the wound in terms of uh, you know killing bacteria uh, and seals it. Uh, and uh, it has some um, uh, clove oil in there for uh, uh, as a clotting agent. Neosporin, always use that in conjunction with a bandage. Uh, even if you don't need it, it makes wounds heal faster and it really, really reduces the uh, the frequency of a wound kind of getting inflamed because it's like a little bit uh, infected. Now, your body could probably handle most of that, but why why tax your body? If you can uh, put some uh, uh, material on there that's going to make it so that your body doesn't have to fight off another infection, I think that, you know, helping out your body is a good thing. Sunblock, I don't have to explain what sunblock is for. Got another uh, mystery, mystery thing. I don't think these are my boy's socks. I, I don't know where I inherited these. Okay, this is... Just a little pumice stone for like if you have a callus or something like that. It's very light, so it doesn't take up any, any room. So I figured I'd throw it in there, and we'll close that up. I, I've got that in, in here, so it doesn't scratch everything else up because it's very rough. Uh, this is the bottle that I use when I slice my foot on the glass in the sewage. Uh, it's a, just a hand sanitizer. I think that's a really useful, uh, useful thing to have in there. Uh, this, what was this? We haven't used this yet. Uh, okay, this is a cream for uh, inflammation, like if you had an allergic reaction to something, uh, um, uh, like uh, you know, poison ivy or rash, heat rash, anything like that. Uh, I got this mostly because my boy, I uh, never really had any issues with that myself, but you know, with, with diapers and things like that, I started carrying that around in case you ever had an issue. Got a little bit of soap, you know, for washing up, you know, if you're camping and you wanna have that. Uh, some talcum powder uh, for feet. I tend to get athlete's foot issues. I really need to keep my feet dry, dry, dry. I go barefoot all the time. People that I know usually are, uh, will see me going barefoot and they're like, oh, I couldn't do that because it would dry and crack my feet uh, having them out and exposed all the time. I'm the opposite. I can go barefoot all the time, but when I keep my feet uh, shoved up in a shoe, uh, that's when I they get too moist and then I get athlete's foot. In fact, right now, uh, I'm rocking the socks right now in the car. I love driving barefoot. I feel like you can feel the pedal better. Uh, I, I, I'm under the impression that it might be illegal in some places, but it's like driving with shoes for me is like, you know, trying to like do keyboard typing with boxing gloves on. Uh, Burt's Bees lip balm. Man, if you've got dry lips and they're like actually starting to bleed and stuff like that, it is awful. And you can fix it so easily with something like this. So I keep this, uh, keep this in there. And I like the, the metal tub uh, tubes because uh, they, it keeps it secure in there. If it overheats in the car or something like that, like if you have a uh, chapstick kind of uh, tube where you kind of, uh, rotate it out if it melt it can like kind of melt out of that and make a big mess the metal uh, canisters they're not the easiest to open but you're not going to lose all your stuff I've got some wet naps which are super old i don't even know if those are wet anymore i still get the napkins uh some more ibuprofen in here uh some more skin ointment like for cracked knuckles and things of that nature i do have one of these i I probably should. I'm gonna get rid of that. I, a lot of times people just give me stuff, and I'm kind of like, I don't know what to do with that. I guess maybe I'll throw it in my bag. Uh, this is something that's coming up more and more now. Potassium iodine pills. I've carried these for decades in here. Never had to use them. Hopefully, we never do have to use them. Uh, and I've got both adult and child size, so I don't have to break an adult size down for my boy to have in there. I think that's an important thing to have. Not that this protects you from every uh, radio uh, radioactive isotope, but it will hit a bunch of them. Uh, cough drops in there as well, uh, you know, for a sore throat. One more item in here. Oh, and it's just a uh, antisept, uh, antibacterial kind of uh, kind of wipe. So I, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, use this prep more than any of my other preps that I use in my life because it's always with, with me. And granted, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff in here I don't touch, but a good 20% of the things that are in here I'm using all the time. If you want to start your own backpack, uh, your own EDC kind of backpack, what I would recommend is, you know, get some ideas from what I've done, but don't put in things that you don't personally use. If you don't have like an athlete's foot problem, you know, 
don't muck up your backpack with something like that. You know, you, everybody's going to have their own unique kind of things that they're going to want in there. And uh, a good way to think about this, especially you know for uh, you know mothers out there, is an EDC pack is kind of like like a mommy bag, uh, really, because a mommy bag is all about having the kind of things that your kid is going to need. And that is exactly what this is. It's all the, all the kinds of things that my kid is going to need and that I'm going to need in a pinch so that, you know, if we were in a situation where you know, we didn't have access to food or water or something like that, I mean, I'm not talking like forever. I just mean like for an afternoon. It's like, oh, we forgot to pack lunch. It's not a big deal because I've got granola bars in here and that can at least make it so people aren't like, you know, feeling hungry and uncomfortable. If we forgot to bring water, it's not a big deal because I've at least got some water in here so that, you know, people can not have a completely dry throat and you can like, you know, get back home at the end of the day. Things like this, they're not, yes, they would be enormously helpful if you were in a situation where it's like the end of the world and, you know, I need my backpack. Not that it's going to save your life or anything like that, but it's going to make things more comfortable for you. But the majority of the time you're using things like this is everyday life when it's like, oh, I, I need to blow my nose, but I don't have any tissues. Look, I've got a handkerchief right here. I'm thirsty. I, okay. I don't have to go on with example after example, but the, the whole idea about this and about prepping in general, uh, it, yeah, okay, it might save your life in an emergency, but most of the time it's just about making your life better and more comfortable. But anyway, if you're thinking about starting your own bug out bag, I highly recommend that, yes, take some tips from myself and other people here on YouTube about what we have in our bags, but really what you have to do is just feel out what are the things that you need and what are the things that you use on a daily basis and primarily pack your bag with that type of thing. You can think about the extraneous sorts of circumstances like the potassium iodine tablets that I have in mind, if there was a you know radiological threat or, uh, or something of that nature, but really the primary benefit that you're going to be receiving from an ED pack is that all the types of things that come up on a daily basis you're going to be able to have access to those things you know with just by just grabbing that one bag as you leave the house so it makes it very difficult to forget things if you know that as long as I grab my EDC bag I know I'm gonna have all the basic things that I might need for that day that's it I hope you find this helpful thanks for watching and check us out tonight eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time over at Survival Living's channel it's myself Survival Living and also Ryan from Prescott Caliber Club this episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.